प्लीज वेलकम इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ डॉमेटोलॉजी विद मी डॉक्टर चेष्टा अग्रवाल योर नीट पीज एजुकेटर ऑफ द बेस्ट ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म दैट इज़ एन अकेडमी नाउ माई सेल्फ स्कोर ऑल इंडिया रैंक टू सिक्सटी वन इन माई नीट पी जी एंट्रेंस एग्जामिनेशन नाउ वी हैव केप्ट द ऑल इंडिया मॉक टेस्ट विच वॉज इनिशियली ऑन नाइनटीथ द डेट हैज़ बीन रिवाइज एंड नाउ दिस टेस्ट इज ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ फेब सो आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टू प्लीज बी अ पार्ट ऑफ इट we have also launched a one month extra uh, if you take a three month subscription so uh, i request all of you to please uh, download the an academy learning app and get a three month subscription using my referral code jstart <coughs> using my referral code jstart so this offer is a very limited time period offer so requesting all of you to please get it uh, we have two type of subscription one is plus which give you an access to an academy live classes and we have iconic which give you an access to both an academy and prep ladder i congratulate all my students who have cleared their fmg exam uh, the month uh, the the next week schedule for the free live classes is here so i request all of you to please be a part you can give these test uh, using the code cheshta10 they are all free test but you just need to enroll them using a code and this is my code we have free live classes please remember every day at 3 pm i take free live classes so just download the app and come at 3 pm tomorrow at 2 pm i have a session so you can just go in my app uh, in my profile on the app and you can follow me to get all the notifications of my classes now we are also launching a new batch where all the educators who teach in an academy will be the part so if like one subject you will have a lot of educators who will be teaching so i request all of you to please use this code cheshta10 and take a 3 month subscription of an academy so that you can be a part of all educator revision batch there are many more batches that is the fmg december 2022 the comprehensive revision batch and we have a target next batch both of them are starting on 11th uh, i would highly recommend the 3 month subscription where the one month is free please use my code cheshta10 to get this subscription for free starting with the first question so high probability question or short short questions we have a lot of integrated questions which you can get a child presented to medical opd with bilateral parotid swelling with discomfort during chewing you are one of the junior doctor posted in the opd the professor told you that this boy suffers from a disease with high secondary rate uh, belonging to a family of rna para mixovirus with common complication of asymptomatic meningitis gerile lin strain is a live attenuated vaccine available for disease which of the following is the correct answer <coughs> anyone uh, devaki can you tell me the answer what is the correct answer of this question you can see a image where you can see there is a parotid swelling so which among the following presents with parotid swelling and we have a attenuated a live attenuated vaccine with a strain zerile lin very nice all my dear students please remember the correct answer of this question would be option number 4 the correct answer of this question would be option number 4 that is mumps now what is mumps it is an infection which affects the parotid gland and it is it belongs to rna para mixovirus group of disorder so i think it's a self explanatory and a very easy question let's move to the next question let's move to the next question a one year old immunized child presented to the primary healthcare facility what is the answer here he presented with a one year old child presented with a primary healthcare center with this pigmentation over the face and trunk mother gives a history of having fever 15 days following which he develops rash starting behind the ear and pinna the associated symptoms were running nose congested eye what is the most probable diagnosis running nose and congested eye is the most frequent feature rubella mumps measles chicken pox anyone so you can see that there is a lot of pigmented patches on the face of this patient so what can be the diagnosis what are we suspecting here very nice amazing the associated symptoms of running nose congested eye the probable diagnosis here is measles following measles it is seen that few individual develop pigmentation and that is very very common on the face followed by trunk so here there is a typical history which is there that there is a fever and following which there is pigmentation so the correct answer of this question becomes option number 3 next question a 43 year old woman 
comes to the emergency room with a temperature of 101 multiple tender macules on both the lower limbs you can see that there are multiple uh, macules this is the third episode of this woman the physical exam is otherwise normal there are presence of multiple scars on her abdomen and the woman is admitted to the hospital and is observed to be holding her thermometer next to the light bulb to heat it up when confronted she angrily denies any such behavior and signs out of hospital against medical advice so she leave the healthcare facility when she was observed holding the thermometer next to the light bulb the most likely diagnosis for this particular patient would be anyone Devaki, Selva, Dharmesh a very interesting question we can see multiple hyperpigmented patches which are present on the lower extremity if you want I can zoom this for all of you so please have a look here you can just zoom it and have a look very nice all of you very nice this is a very classical image where the patient is inducing the lesions on themselves so this is a case of malingering where the patient injures himself and this is the reason uh, it could be because of underlying attention seeking behavior so you can have the underlying seeking or attention seeking behavior and these patients are psychiatric patient you need to take psychological references in these individuals next question a woman presented to dermatological OPD with complaints of pigmentation of tongue knuckles. On further explanation, she reports dysphagia and anemia. What is the syndrome mentioned in this presentation? Anyone can tell me the answer here. Hyperpigmentation of the knuckles of the tongue is seen here. A woman presented to dermatology OPD with complaints of pigmentation of tongue and knuckle and further examination reports dysphagia and anemia. What is the syndrome mentioned in the presentation? The correct answer is plumer Vinson. Very nice. Now in plumer Vinson, you, you have iron deficiency anemia. This everybody know that there is iron deficiency anemia. <clears throat> there is iron deficiency anemia. But in addition to iron deficiency anemia, they also have vitamin B12 deficiency. Now why they develop vitamin D B12 deficiency is because secondary to iron deficiency they develop gastric atrophy. And you all know that for absorption of vitamin B12 we need a factor which is known as intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor which is released. We need a factor which is known as intrinsic factor which is released from the gastric mucosa. So if there is atrophy of the gastric lining, there will be no intrinsic factor and the absorption of vitamin B12 will be very very deficient. So please remember this is a very classical case of plumer Vinson syndrome. Very classical case of plumer Vinson syndrome with gastric atrophy and secondary vitamin B12 deficiency. Next question. A 45 year old male had multiple hypoesthetic mildly erythematous large plaques with elevated margins on the trunk and extremity. The ulnar and the lateral popliteal nerve on the right sides were enlarged. Asha detected this case of leprosy and reports it to the healthcare facility. She helped the person to get the multidrug therapy and followed him till 18th month when he had to finish all the packets of MDT MB. What is the incentive she will get? Dharmesh, Selva, Devki. <clears throat> what is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? Very nice. Now here it is a patient of leprosy. This is not a pure dermatology question. In a patient of leprosy, you know that uh, you must have read in your uh, PSM classes that we have ASHA workers who has to detect the case of leprosy. 
when asha detects a case of leprosy she gets 250 rupees she gets 250 rupees when she detect the next is if she follows a posi bacillary patients for the whole duration of the treatment if she follows the posi bacillary for whole duration she receives an intensive of uh, she receives an incentive of 400 and when she follows a patient of multi bacillary leprosy for the whole duration she receives an incentive of 600 rupees and here the correct answer becomes option number 2 clear let's move to the next question a child is brought by her mother with complaints of what is the correct answer here the complaints of sudden onset of fever a few days ago light headedness nausea vomiting watery diarrhea physical examination reveals a desquamating rash of her palm and sole he has no sick contact and there is no evidence of ingestion of unsafe food upon questioning the patient says that he had received a vaccine few days back what is the most likely cause for this particular condition anyone what is the most likely cause here anyone now i will tell you the diagnosis the diagnosis here is toxic shock syndrome the toxic shock syndrome occurs secondary to staphylococcus aureus and sometimes when we inject measles vaccine the top get infected with the staph aureus infection in those individuals if we inject the babies with this infected vaccine they may get toxic shock syndrome like features where there is features of shock and there is palmo plantar desquamation of the skin so very nice the correct answer is option number 3 now few pharmacology or derma pharma questions which of the following is a polyene antifungal drug amphotericin b meconazole griseofulvin or fluconazole which of the following is a polyene antifungal drug very well done all of you very nice the polyene antifungal drug which we usually give in systemic fungus and that is amphotericin b how does amphotericin works amphotericin causes pores in the existing cell membrane while the other drugs like meconazole fluconazole or terbinafine they inhibit the synthesis of new cell membrane so that is the difference so what happens they forms some pores inside the cell membrane and these pores will then cause damage to the cell or damage to the fungus killing it okay so the correct answer is option number 1 the polyene antibiotic act by so we have just now read it how does polyene antibiotic act inhibiting the fungal cytochrome binding to ergosterol which is the cell membrane and creating the pores in cell membrane inhibiting the fungal dna or disorienting the microtubules which of the following is the correct answer very nice the correct answer is option number 2 please remember the amphotericin work by inhibiting or by damaging the existing cell membrane and the existing cell membrane it creates pore and that is why the best possible answer is option number 2 amphotericin b is not effective in following fungal disease cryptococcus histoplasmosis blastomycosis or dermatophytosis i request all the students to please answer this because only few students i can see who are answering this what about the remaining students there are a lot of students who are not answering the question amphotericin b is not effective in the following fungal disease cryptococcus histoplasmosis blastomycosis or dermato dermatophytosis please remember amphotericin b it is given systematically and it works best for systemic fungus like cryptococcus histoplasma and blastomycosis dermatophytosis is the superficial fungal infection which affects the dead part of the skin that is keratophilic part it is a keratophilic fungus it is a keratophilic fungus which affects the 
keratin containing part and that is dermatophytosis so amphotericin b do not work on option number 4 regarding the lipid or liposomal formulations of amphotericin which of the following statement is accurate which of the following statement is accurate Which of the following statement is accurate? Regarding the liposomal formulations, which of the following statement is accurate? Very nice all of you, very well done. The only correct answer is option number 3. Now you must have heard that we have liposomal formulations of amphotericin B available nowadays. Why do we give these liposomal formulations? What extra they do? Please remember the liposomal formulation, it only helps in reducing the nephrotoxicity of amphotericin B. It is more expensive compared to the non-liposomal formulation. The effectiveness is same. So you cannot say that liposomal formulations are more effective. They are similar in efficacy. It do not increase the spectrum of action. The spectrum of action also remains same for both the amphotericin liposomal as well as non-liposomal associated amphotericin B. Which antifungal drug inhibit the microtubules in the fungus? Which antifungal inhibits the microtubule in a patient of fungus? Flu cytosine, griseofulvin, ketoconazole or capsofungin? What is the correct answer? drugs that inhibit the microtubule function is griseofulvin. Please remember it is the griseofulvin which inhibits the microtubule function. Which of the following azole is used for or which is used in a systemic manner? Which of the following azole is used in a systemic manner? Econazole, clotrimazole, ketoconazole or meconazole. Which azole is used by systemic root? Please remember the answer is ketoconazole. So the azoles has been divided into two broad category. One is the, what are the two broad category? Can anybody tell me the answer? One is the triazole and the next is imidazole. One is triazole, another is imidazole. Imidazole includes the ketoconazole, clotrimazole, meconazole and econazole. So all these four are the imidazole group. It is associated with a lot of systemic side effects like gynecomastia. It is associated with gynecomastia. It can even cause or it is an enzyme inhibitor. So it can cause side effects with the other drug. It is an enzyme inhibitor. And that is why we prefer giving imidazole group in a topical formulation only. But there is only one drug which can be used in both topical and or, uh, oral formulation that is ketoconazole. We prefer giving triazole in a systemic manner and the triazole group includes fluconazole and etraconazole. They have lesser side effect compared to that of the imidazole group. Clear all of you? So <coughs> again this is a pure pharmacology question. It is a pure pharmacological uh, question. The most probable mechanism of action of imidazole antifungal drugs is. So today we have a lot of derma pharma integrated questions. You can get a question or an image showing the fungus and they can ask you the questions related to uh, that of the drugs. So the most probable mechanism of action of imidazole antifungal would be. Anyone? We have discussed that azole group, it works by inhibiting the new cell membrane. So bind to ergosterol? No. It is the polyene group which bind to the existing ergosterol and make it leaky. They interfere with ergosterol synthesis by the fungus. That is the correct option. 
इंटरफेरेंस विथ फंगस माइटोसिस इट इज अ फीचर ऑफ ग्रिस्टोफलविन by inhibiting the microtubules and they bind to ergosteral cell membrane and they make it leaky this is a feature of m4 teresin the correct answer of this question would be option number 3 clear all of you with this we are done with the short session today that is that include a lot of integrated question we had derma pharma integration derma psm integration and derma micro integration so i request all of you to please follow these classes please subscribe to the youtube channel that is let's crack neat pg we have a lot more sessions on the telegram group as well as on the special classes we are having a telegram group with the same name that is let's crack neat pg if you want to subscribe an academy you can use my code cheshta10 and get an academy subscription and if you like this class please give me a thumbs up or press the bell icon to get all the notification of my classes thank you all of you take care